so this is going to be no nonsense uh, straight to the dharma and secus mainly and also other also this particular uh, questions are also going to be important from the ups and also fmg exam point of view also okay so just uh, five month old infant is brought to the dermatology opity with intense itching especially at the night time multiple excoriated papules and burrows are seen and a clinical diagnosis of scabies is made the pediatrician plans to initiate the therapy which are the appropriate medications which we can use in the infant with the scabies okay so this was a question which was asked so remember students permethrin 5 percent cream it is a you know topical treatment of choice in the case of the infants Crotamiton 10% cream can also be used in the infants. Okay. So remember students, Ivermectin, Benzoyl, Benzoid, they cannot be used. So these are the two which cannot be used. So option C, 1 and 3 is going to be the answer. I have also put a reference for you. This is a table from Bologna for the treatment of the scabies. There you can see that permethrin cream it is fda approved for the infants usage and also you can see that the crotomiton lotion is also considered as safe in the case of the infants whereas you can clearly see that ivermectin ivermectin it is not well established so we are not going to use the ivermectin and also you can see the benzel benzoate also it is mentioned as not well established what could be the future questions in uh, this particular topic so sulfur ointment it is considered safe in the infant so even a topical sulfur can also be used in the case of the infants that is an additional point which you need to remember and one more thing you need to uh, see here very carefully is that the lindane the topical lindane is not recommended for infants so this these are some of the treatments which can be used in the infants and which cannot be used and this is the next question hpv so this gynec can also derma integrated question we can say hpv cervical cancer associated strains remember students this is a very very important repeated question answer is going to be option b 16 and 18 option b 16 and 18 and that is a very simple logic why we have in the vaccination hpv 16 and 18 in all the types of the vaccine hpv vaccines okay right next all are associated with thalidomide so this is a dermatology and also pharma integrated question except one all of the following are associated with thalidomide so used in type 2 leper reaction yes it is the gold standard drug in the erythema notosum leprosum it has teratogenic effects absolutely right foco milia if you remember used in the refractory cases of multiple myeloma this is also a correct statement so what is uh, left out it does not have anti-metabolite action in fact it has immunomodulatory action so it has immunomodulatory action but not anti-metabolite action okay next is this uh, dermatology question so where a progressive and asymptomatic lesion was shown over the neck and there is no systemic involvement noted these were given in the question so what investigations are going to be done in this particular patient you able to see that basically this is a ring shaped lesion which is having one end which is progressive and also which is active and it is uh, showing at the other end little bit of scarring so if you see this kind of image always think of the diagnosis of cutaneous tuberculosis which is the most common type which is lupus vulgaris lupus vulgaris so i hope you remember the dioscopy is going to show the apple jelly nodules in this case we can perform a skin biopsy where we are going to see the tuberculoid granulomas and also we can do the chest x-ray which is a basically tb workup because there could be an underlying uh, uh, tuberculosis because this is a cutaneous tuberculosis which could have an underlying tuberculosis focus okay and why is it not KOH? So if this was the image which was given and if it was mentioned instead of asymptomatic in the question, if it was mentioned as itchy lesion, then the diagnosis would have been tinea, tinea corporis, which also has an annular lesion, which uh, has a, a active periphery and a scaling and also symptoms will be there. If it was having itching, then it could have been tinea, then KOH would have been the correct answer but since it is asymptomatic we will think of lupus vulgaris as the diagnosis 
so these are the two correct uh, statements and some students also told me that sir there was kaposi sarcoma like image which was given so please uh, uh, you know forward me the image which your you feel was asked in the exact uh, uh, same image in the exam so with the help of that i can come to a conclusion what could be the answer okay biopsy of a patient with recurrent painful vesicular lesions and superficial erosions in the genital area is as shown what is the best treatment option for this patient so i hope this is very straightforward uh, question which is many times asked repeated so whenever you see a genital area having painful vesicular lesions what is the diagnosis you need to think of it is going to be genital herpes which is due to herpes simplex virus type 2 more than type 1 okay so it is going to show on biopsy i do, uh, i don't know whether this was exact image so if it was uh, yes please do hit that like button if it was different uh, please do hit that like button and post the different image in my telegram group or whatsapp group so if this was given this is showing the multinucleated gen cells which can be seen on the zang smear so what is the best treatment option for this yes it is an antiviral acyclovir is going to be the treatment uh, given for this patients okay next is patient came with the history of a single transient genital lesion two weeks back okay now presents with it is not popular it is papular brown lesion which is present over the palms and the soles which are the following investigations is used to diagnose this particular disease so if you have got this single transient genital lesion two weeks back as the uh, uh, one of the buzzword or one of the clue in the question then always always think about the possibility of the what is that treponema pallidum associated syphilis which can present with a single genital ulcer which is painless so it may be very transient even without the treatment this can be this can be normalized and the, so we can say it is a transient genital ulcer without treatment also it can heal so after that there is going to be hematogenous spread of the treponema pallidum leading to the secondary syphilis in which we are going to see these hyperpigmented asymptomatic papules and plaques which are present these are called as syphilids these are very characteristic of the secondary syphilis and so what is going to the investigation in the case of secondary syphilis so you have to do a vdrl test what is it it is a serological test so option d is going to be the correct answer in this question and if you have any other version of this question or the image please be uh, feel free to tell me that in the uh, live chat so i am watching the live chat please in the live chat uh, comment whether this was the same thing and if this was the same thing serology please do hit that like button if you feel that this is the same question which was asked next is the local side effects of the topical corticosteroids among the following this is a multiple correct answer type question so remember students yes we are going to see atrophy of the skin because of the topical steroids b is correct acne form eruptions yes that is the reason why topical steroids are not used and contraindicated in the acne okay so next is hypertrichosis yes this is the increased hair growth which is also seen after the topical steroids so if it was uh, what are all the options uh, you know correct which will have the local side effect of due to the topical steroids then you can mark b c d as the answer okay bluish discoloration is not seen and alopecia students told it was not there but let me tell you alopecia is also not associated with topical corticosteroid usage in fact alopecia areata if you remember we are actually using topical steroids as a treatment modality where there is going to be regrowth of the hair okay right so this is the next question which was asked you need to identify the correct statements this is a multiple correct answer type question epidermis can regenerate from the hair bulb and the sebaceous glands absolutely correct statement the reason is because stem cells are present near the hair bulb and also in the sebaceous gland this is correct statement stratum corneum is outermost acellular layer so this cellular part is wrong other than that it is yes outermost a cellular layer so that is the reason why this is wrong if it has to be correct it should have been mentioned a cellular layer epidermis is ectodermal in origin absolutely correct statement dermis and hypodermis are 
mesodermal in origin okay so this is a wrong statement if it was mentioned mesodermal it would have been correct so you can select a and c as the correct statements in this particular question next this is a factual question most common manifestation of the systemic lupus erythematosus is it is arthralgia and myalgia remember the examiner is not asking you most common cutaneous manifestation no examiner specifically is asking by large overall what is the most common manifestation of the systemic lupus erythematosus so this is a table from harrison where you can see clearly the manifestations of the systemic lupus erythematosus and their prevalence you can see the musculoskeletal system involvement is 95 percent seen in the patients of sle and that to arthralgia and myalgia it is 95 percent seen in the patients of sle so that is going to be the correct answer if the examiner would have asked what is the most common cutaneous change in the sle then you can mark photosensitivity because it is 70 percent of the cutaneous manifestations in a patient of sle this is a pharmacology and dermatology and uh, microbiology integrated question so basically 24 year old sexually active male is having uh, you know painful urination and urethral discharge so basically this is urethritis uh, fever chills are there and multiple unprotected sexual exposures is there intracellular gram negative diplococci are noted and the organism is resistant to the penicillin which of the following is the most appropriate treatment so please remember students the answer for this question is going to be option b ceftrioxone ceftrioxone in fact if you remember uh, in the kit in the naco kit we are going to use kit number one for for the treatment of the urethritis which is going to consist of cefixim so that is going to have tablet cefixim 800 mg so this is the additional add-on point so remember students the std sexual transmitted disorders are very very important in fact you can see in this paper also there are so many questions urethritis one question from syphilis and other question from uh, genital herpes so very very important topic std you have to definitely read it okay along with cefexim in the case of kit uh, one we are going to have the azithromycin it is going to be one gram okay so cefexim is going to take care of the gonococcus and uh, azithromycin is going to take care of the chlamydia non-gonococcal urethritis thank you so much dear students uh, i hope this video was helpful if at all you have, you have any queries or any doubts uh, on the uh, you know topics uh, or on the questions or in the options you can feel free to whatsapp me on this number take at least one day of a break preferably because you are completely stressed out on this day after one day think of what mistakes you made what topics you made wrong what subjects you felt you are strong but you are weak actually and then try to uh, regain your confidence and uh, go to the next exam that is going to be the neat exam which is very very important for all of you okay so with that i just want to end this session thank you so much dear students for all the patient listening uh, we'll meet again in the next video till then happy happy learning sarvam sri krishna arpanam sarvam